Hey everybody, welcome to another War... Oh, drop the model straight away. We are back with another Warhammer Wednesday and we're going with this model. I think he's an infiltrator. It's probably the wrong one. If it is, let me know. And he has like a little medical gauge kit on his wrist and a little medipack. So this model fits perfectly for the viewer pick, which will be Red Scorpions. Now, Parkway Driven 5089 suggested the Red Scorpions. He also suggested Celestial Lions, Emperor's Spears, Iron Snakes, Dark Krakens, all great choices. But when I saw the Red Scorpions and then I saw this model, I knew it had to be this one. So as you can see, I primed him white and I'm just going to start slapping down Gravelord Grey to get the iconic grey undertone that they have on their armour. The reason I picked this one, beyond the actual model fitting perfectly into the theme of the chapter, I'm a big fan of the Badab War. I have the Forge World books. I used to collect uh, the Tyrant's Legion, which was a an amazing army list. It was Imperial Guard and Space Marines combined. Ultimately, that was probably the last time I properly played 40k. Built that army, had a wonderful time playing it. Then the rules all changed, and it really killed my interest in the game. I actually sold that army. Uh, I kept my Eldar from that time, and I really need to look into rebasing them to get them actually uh, back into playable ways, because their bases are way too small. But that's a story for another day. Right, let's get back to what we're doing. We're painting a red scorpion. As you can see, I've waffled so long that we have now completed the grey already. And look at that. He is already looking like a sweet, sweet red scorpion. So we're going to work on his arm next with the holy white. This is his apothecary bit. And I'll try and talk about the red scorpions for a bit. They are a chapter of space marines in a fleet-based chapter of an unknown founding and genetic lineage. Believed to be... Uh, maybe of the Ultramarines, possibly of uh, Imperial Fists. No one is entirely sure. But they are known for their absolute adherence to every line of the Codex, which makes me think they are Ultramarines. They are very prone to fighting the forces of chaos, and they refuse to deal with any Xenos species or humans that are considered as tainted by music and even impartially sanctioned apt humans like ogrens and ratlins fall under that category. So these are real Puritans. They will not serve with beastmen and they refuse to work alongside the Voltan, or squats as they were once known. Fanatical in their pursuit of genetic and spiritual purity, their gene seed is essential to the Red Scorpion's core beliefs. As a result, they have more apothecaries than most chapters, Hence the model, and their master of the Apothecarian is second in command of the whole chapter. Ooh. And you're more likely to find an Apothecary acting like a squad sergeant in a Red Scorpion army. So you need a lot of Apothecary-esque models splattered around because this just seems to be the theme. Now, back in my day, this was purely a Forge World army. They were designed for, I think, the Siege of Vax may have been the first one, though there was a Tyranid battle that I cannot for the life of me remember. Uh, whilst I'm thinking about that, we'll start painting the hardened leather. But yeah, they, was, they were designed to be the Forge World Space Marine chapter, to the point that throughout the books you actually see one character, uh, Cullen, I believe his name was. He starts off as a sergeant, Works his way up to a captain. During the Badab War, he became chapter master. And then later on, he died and was put into a dreadnought. So they had a character that they built out his entire career and life story through these war books that they used to release in the... Uh, damn, I got absolutely covered in brown paint. Um, <laughs> the, they uh, released through this Forge World series of army books. And it was so much fun. It really, for me, that was a high point of Forge World. They're making beautiful models. I lived close enough to get Forge World delivered for free to local games workshop. And 
I was able to build out an army. I then brought it to Canada. Had, like I said, played so many games with my Tyrant Legion. And then Forge World kind of went belly up. I don't know what happened with Forge World. It got sucked into the main company and it's lost a lot of its character now. It's a real shame, but it happens. But yeah, anyway, we're back. We're back to the Red Scorpions. They're an interesting chapter. Very easy to paint, to be honest with you. Once the grey is down, you're 90% done. Like, the grey went down really nicely, as it always does. It's the Gravelord Grey by Army Painter, which probably would make this army super easy to paint. Like, a whole squad of these shouldn't take long with the grey being so easy to put down. Uh, it's very tempting, actually. <laughs> if... Um, if they weren't a, such a loyalist whip dog, I would uh, I would be tempted to paint a full squad of these. But I'm always going to be a villain at heart. So I think I need a slightly more traitorous Puritan force if I'm ever going to actually do Space Marines properly. I know I got my executioners, but they didn't quite scratch the itch I was hoping for. I'm going to keep them because I need a little Space Marine army for the future. But... I don't know. I'm struggling with 40k. I don't know about you guys. Let me know in the comments. But I have not felt the urge to buy anything or pick up anything, which is never a good sign. Uh, Kill Team tempted me, but then I bought a box set and I read the rules and I got bored of reading the rules. So that went nowhere. I'm really enjoying like my Warlord game stuff. I've also got, uh, it's not Stargrave, Space Station Zero. Got the rules for that printed out. I keep wanting to play a game. I am going to try and play a game soon. Let me know in the comments if you actually want to see that happen. But yeah, I think I'm, for now, at least with 40k, I'm happy reading the Black Library books and I'm happy painting the odd miniature now and again just to get through the backlog of models. The only thing that will really get me back into it will be the Eldari. I don't know when their codex is coming out, but when it does, I have to rebase all my guardians, which is going to be a real pain. I don't particularly want to do it, but it's kind of one of those things. If I'm going to at least attempt to play it in the future, I should try and update my army so it's closer to being game ready as possible. And whilst I'm rabbiting on, you can see I'm painting Grim Black into all his armor joints. I'm going to work my way around the entire model doing this. It's not super exciting, so I'll skip forward a little bit. Now, the thing with the red scorpions, as I'm doing his little pistol handle, I've done the bolt gun, the magazine, gun sights, and his one of his shoulder pads. Their shoulder pads are black. I'm not 100% sure I want <laughs> to use the grim black for this. It's probably not going to be in my best interests to do it. But we are going to try and do this shoulder pad in black. It also has a yellow trim, so I've got to try and be as neat as humanly possible doing it. One thing I'm not known for is my neatness when it comes to painting straight lines. So I'm going to try and do this as neat as I can. I've always, already wobbled there. That's going to be a pain to cover up. Anyway, we'll see how that affects the final results. All right, this model has a ton of antenna, so I grabbed the runic grey. Normally on models like this one, I would be using the Gravelord grey, but because that is predominantly the model's armour, we're going to have to use the runic grey instead on the antennas. See how we get on with that. It should be all right. I'm also going to use it on the little uh, vials it's got on his apothecary set. I'm probably going to try and put a liquid in there. So I want it to look maybe 50% this kind of grey colour. We can pretend it's the glass effect going on. Something silly like that. And then once I decide what colour we're going to put in the vowels, I will do that as well. Then we have a really quick step, which is just pallid bone. And I'm going to use that on... There's a little purity seal on his waist. And then we're also going to do his chest piece, which is a skull and crossbone motif. Like I said, very quick step. 
This will probably be done before I finish this sentence, and we can dive straight into the next bit, which is blood red. I am doing the eye lenses in this red. I tried to get my brush to have the best point I can physically give it, in the hopes that I don't make too much of a mess. And as a kid of second edition, there is only one colour you can paint a bolt gun. And that colour is red. So I'm painting it red. It's going to be bright, it's going to be garish. 90% of the current fandom is probably going to hate the red bolter. But that it was how I was raised. I was raised properly as a child. Bolt guns are bright red. It's just the way they should be. Don't like it? Pick an army that is blood red in colour and you can paint them black. Otherwise, they are meant to be bright red. Bright red until the day I die. I then grab the Maligant green and I decide to put that into the vials. It's something sickly green about this colour that just felt right for Medicaid. He's checking purity gene seeds and all that stuff. Maybe something's come up green and he's not happy. Maybe they're fighting Nurgle. And they're like, oh, oh, somebody's sick. This isn't good. That's pretty much all I'm doing with the green. I just uh, whipped out for that one tiny bit of the model. Then it's onto a tried and tested color, the plasmatic bolt. I love using this on aquatic creatures, but it also works wonderfully for computer screens. So there you go, blobbing it on. Going to use it on these uh, lenses on the bolt gun, just so it has a little bit of a different color going on. Pretty happy with how this is looking at the moment. Like I said, super easy scheme to paint. Like I am, I'll be honest, I'm probably 22-ish minutes into the painting. And we've, we're pretty much 90% done on this model. If I had a squad of 10, I'd be whipping through these pretty damn quick, I think. And then we are on to the final color, which is going to be the Zealot Yellow, which we're going to use on the shoulder pad trim. Once we've got that done, we'll take the glamour shots as we always do. And I hope you enjoyed. I forgot to say midway through, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. This has been Adventures with Peps. I hope you've enjoyed my company and I will catch you very soon. If you wish to leave me a comment, let me know a Space Marine chapter you want to see painted on the channel and I'll see if I can help out. Otherwise, drop a scorpion in the comment and just say hi. I love talking to you guys, so do reach out. Also, if you head over to the community page, I have dropped a link to the Discord. It's open to the public now. I did have it as a members-only section to begin with because uh, I wanted to test it out, make sure it wasn't broken. It has passed the testing stage, so it is now open for you all to enjoy. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, please consider the Coffee Club subscription button down below. It's two Canadian a month, and it does seriously help me supply myself with coffee whilst painting these miniatures. But until next time, cheers for watching.